Hi there, let's see how a uh, slicer object works in uh, Plexus 3. So I already have a new install here, I'm going to go play Plexus. And I have an OBJ file imported into the project. And I'm just going to go add a new OBJ file. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to adjust the file a little bit here. Uh, just kind of like uh, okay and I'm gonna add facet renderer so I see the faces here and I'm gonna turn off the points make it a new camera so we have a basic scene with an OBJ file and to really understand what slicer is I'm gonna start with a simple uh, premise here uh, let me create a new uh, light and let's call it I get spotlight. This is key because of uh, one thing. Spotlights have direction, unlike uh, point lights, which will be useful in this case. So let's call this plexus layer uh, OBG layer. Uh, naming is really key here because it gets a little uh, messy if you don't organize it properly. And let me create a new solid and let's call it uh, plexus light. Now I'm just using a spotlight here because it's easy to adjust the direction. You can use a null layer or any 3D uh, solid which has uh, some kind of direction attributes to it. And I'm just going to apply plexus to this layer too, to the new solid. And I'm going to add a layers object and I'm going to select spotlights. Now I'm going to turn off the vertices between lights thing right now because I don't need that and increase the point size. You can see the point here. Now just to kind of uh, give us a better visual cue I'm going to change the color here to like red so it's more obvious. So we have a scene here where there's a light and there's an OBJ mesh and let's go ahead and create another layer. Let's call this the slicer. Now I'm going to add plexus again and I'm going to add slice our object. Now you see we have like four layers, actually three layers here and uh, Plexus uh, it detects changes right away because uh, it uses a new architecture in 13.5. Uh, just a little uh, tip there. Now we're in slicer object so what the slicer object does is it takes an existing mesh, takes all its points and just shoots rays along its direction, along its normal. So let me, from in the slicer object, in the from mesh layer, let me select the plexus lights. And in the to mesh layer, let's select the OBJ layer. Now, you don't see anything right away because the point is probably really small. So I'm going to crank up the point really high. See, let's flip the direction. Yep. I'm going to crank up the point really high and change the color to pink. So flipping the direction literally uh, flips which way uh, the rays are cast. But I think by default they're cast in the opposite direction. But once you select the flip direction, it uh, casts rays in this direction. So here, this is a little uh, interesting. So if you move this here, the point moves along the surface of this mesh. 
that's an important thing to note because as soon as this line hits uh, the mesh here, the point is created. So even if you move this one here, only the points points her uh, the the point is uh, added here only when the ray hits the mesh. So right now in this case, the ray is cast along this side, and as soon as it hits the mesh here, it creates a point. Now it can be useful if you're if you have a little uh, spotlight, but it's definitely useful when you have a lot of points. So to demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to turn off the Alplex uh, lights and I'm going to create a new one. Call it paths because I'm going to add path object and plexus geometry paths. I'm going to create the ellipse tool, select the ellipse tool and create a path. Now we have uh, a bunch of circular path uh, points here in this direction. So I'm just going to add a transform to kind of rotate the X uh, along the X axis and maybe a scale a little bit so it doesn't come along the way and adjust the translation a bit. So it's aligned along the OBJ. Now let's go back to our slicer. Actually, let's delete the light. We don't need the lights anymore. Let's go back to the slicer and this time let's select the front mesh layer as the path layer. And now let's uncheck the flip direction. This depends on the object, so we just gotta see which works. Now you see the points are created along uh, as soon as so if for each and every point in the path object a ray is cast and as soon as it's the mesh a point is created to better understand it I'm just gonna create a new instance object here I'm going to select the instance layer as the path layer now I don't need the path I can just turn it off now I'm going to create beams In the slicer layer and I'm gonna put this uh, slicer object in group 1 and the instances in group 2 and in the beams select like groups so that just so that I could you could see how it works so pretty much a ray is cast from each and every point and as soon as it hits the mesh a point is created this itself is pretty interesting and it gets a little interesting once you add a rotation to it. So you have this slicing effect. That's why the name uh, Slicer is, uh, is came from. And it gets even more interesting. Uh, I'm going to turn on the beams right now. It's Actually, it's in the slicer object, so I'm going to turn it off to delete it. And in the, let's go back to the paths object, and let's go back to the paths and replicate it. So maybe make it to 10 and decrease it a little bit. So, and if you want, let's animate. Uh, the translation here is the was the Y translation, yep. So let's go back all the way down and kind of put it all the way up. So you can see the object kind of uh, goes through around the mesh, wraps around it, and creates a nice uh, slicing effect. Now, let's just uh, turn off the uh, instances here. 
we actually don't need to see that. So you can see it creates a nice, cool uh, slicing effect around the um, mesh object. And I'm just going to change the color to uh, maybe like blue and decrease the point size a lot. And you can add beams if you want. Set my axe. And let's join the ends. And that's like. You can just kind of play around with it if you want. Uh, increase the density a little bit. The paths. Now, if you see, this is a different layer. The path object is in a different, totally different layer. But and it's not even turned on in the in the timeline. But Plexus, uh, it reads the changes automatically if you're using uh, 13.5 and above. Uh, if not, you can just uh, refresh the cache real quick. So right now, see, it kind of creates this nice uh, sweeping effect. And this is just you know one aspect of it. You can create a lot of cool uh, things. For example, um, Apple that I wanted to show you guys is uh, I'm creating a new composition, create a new thing. And let me add Plexus OBJ and the mountain mid poly. And in the OBJ, select mountain mid poly. Now you don't see anything because it's really small. So you gotta scale it up all the way. And invert the Y. So you have a mountain here. And let me create another Plexus layer. Let's create a path. And Plexus, add geometry, paths, and increase the size. And this is where it gets interesting. So let's call this path. It's really important to rename it so you keep track. OBJ. Let's create another solid. And let's call it a slicer. And this time I'm going to add the slicer object. And in the from mesh layer, you need to uh, cast rays from the paths to the OBJ mesh. Might want to flip the direction. Uh, actually, let's see the colors. Let me add a camera. It's a little slow because it's a huge OBJ and doing a screen capture, so it will take a while. And you see that it's like small lines here. Now I made the points really big so you can see how uh, each and every point is kind of, it's more like a projection really on, on top of a mesh. And you see it kind of do this cool thing. Uh, let me decrease the size a little bit, maybe uh, five. Oops. And now. Let's go back to the path object and just kind of animate the uh, position. For example, I'm going to add a transform effector and change the Z translate. Go to here. So I have this. Let me turn off the paths. I don't need this for right now. And it kind of creates this nice effect where it kind of scans through the mesh. Uh, really useful. 
if you want to do some kind of cool form of transition UIs and stuff. And in the path object, let's go back to the path object and increase the replication, maybe to 20. So you have a lot of space and increase the extrusion depth to thousand. So it's kind of spread out just to see the path objects at the top. So this creates a nice uh, projection here. Uh, each and every point, the rays are cast onto the mesh and it kind of creates that. So if you move it around, it kind of creates a scanning kind of effect. Let me to see that properly. I'm just going to turn off the path layer here. And the OBJ layer, let's actually decrease size a little bit. And maybe go back to the, uh, let me trim the comp. So I'm just going to ramp it real quick. So this is a ramp review of how it look at kind of scans of object. Uh, to really see the effect, actually, I'm just going to turn off the OBJ2. And now you can see how it kind of creates a nice uh, sweeping animation. And you can actually add uh, beams, uh, for example. and let me turn on the ramp here and turn off the points. So let's see how this looks. So this is how it looks with beams on the Z axis. It looks a little jittery here because it's on the Z and the points keep changing. So for a better result, I'm actually going to just change the uh, axis to X. Now you see this like uh, sweeping horizontal lines. Uh, let's just ramp it now. As you can see, it looks um, much better now. Uh, kind of creates this nice uh, uh, landscaping thing where it kind of scans through the geometry, which is uh, pretty nice, interesting. And to really see what the landscape is, like you can see like this. I'm gonna add a little facets here so I can see. And really turn off the points and crank down the opacity to like 10%. So it's a silly thing. And you can also add a rotation. For example, if you go to the path object and animate the rotation, right now the the points are just moving in a straight line but if you go to, go to the transform effector and kind of animate uh, not the X well I can do the X too kind of creates this nice uh, thing here but that's for right now let's animate the Y so let's go back here and animate the Y all the way to maybe one rotation towards the end. And let's RAM preview how it looks. I'm just going to turn off the pads and turn off the OBJ2. So this is how the slicer object looks once you have a rotation as well. You can create a lot of interesting things. This is just like an example.